It's about putting uh, a systematic process in place to encourage innovation. So we basically say, look, brands, we want you to participate in these three sectors that we're going after. We want you to put up some cash, and we're going to bring startups in, and you guys are going to have to launch pilots. We don't care whether those pilots are successful or not, but what we care about is that the process you go through is successful, and that's what we care about. That's phase one. The second phase is, okay, now we want a, you to prove to us inside the or and you take hypos, but anyway, inside the organization, we want you to prove to us that you've actually had a culture transfer, so that working with entrepreneurs has actually allowed you to go and apply that yourself because these are the brightest minds in the world. Wharton, Harvard, you know, you name it. We have the brightest minds in the world. Um, it's just that we don't have the same culture that <clears throat> maybe a Twitter or a Google. And Google is a great example in terms of systematizing innovation. They miss social themselves, right? Uh, and so in the second phase, we take the startup and our people, we fly them out to uh, Stanford, we sit them down for a week, and we say, now you come up with a new venture. You try to create a startup that we're going to fund and actually bring to life and push out uh, in, in, into the, into the uh, world. And again, I don't know how many of those are going to succeed. Maybe none of them succeed, but we're successful if they understand and they go through the process and they're changed on the back end. And we're talking about, call, well, you know, we call it entrepreneurship. If they're changed on the back end and they realize that they can leverage this organization to do entrepreneurial things, transformational things. So I guess my short answer is, is that it requires you to create systematic approaches to encouraging uh, and funding I I innovation or else it's just, it just it do it doesn't, it doesn't happen. Right, it's interesting, uh, it, it jogs my mind. Chris just mentioned a moment ago, uh, you're still going to go to the store to buy groceries, you won't get them from Amazon. Um, it's slightly more than 10 years ago now, Webvan thought you would, uh, and they, they invested billions in this giant uh, sort of optimization-driven uh, warehouse to, to allow this all to happen without checking first that people actually wanted to have their groceries delivered to them within some two-hour window. Um, it's, uh, within, within Silicon Valley right now, there's sort of this theme of the lean startup or the scientific startup uh, that really gets to, um, you know, just what are, what are your hypotheses even as a startup? Like, and an important one not to forget in an engineering driven culture is, do people want this thing? <laughs> like, have you asked anyone if they want it? Um, well, so um, uh, with that, um, we should open it up to uh, the audience. Eric, uh, the lovely Eric Porres uh, back there uh, has both a tie and a microphone. Uh, so if anybody has a question, I think. Be that a white, so if anybody has a question. Supposed to get Eric's attention. There we go. I have a question about you know where the future might go, and and I kind of wonder: are, is, do you maybe see marketing becoming a battle or a warfare between two competing systems of artificial intelligence? A battle between two systems. Um, where the well, you know, I would uh, say it's. Uh, I can say one example just from from us. Uh, you talked about the flash crash. Um, there's a